Hi. It's been a while, not for you, but for me, because the last video that I uploaded, which would have been a wrap up from the summer, was filmed before the video I uploaded the week previous to that. So, um, it's always a bit weird when I haven't filmed for a while. Hello, I'll get used to it in a second. Um, if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Jen. I'm an author and a book reviewer. I would like to throw autumn at this vlog as much as possible because I feel like I need it. Maybe you need it too. And I don't care if it's a cliche, but that's, that's what the heart wants right now. Um, thank you very much for your very kind comments and messages on the last video that I made, which was, um, well, it was a reading vlog, but in that, just to bluntly, briefly recap, I mentioned that our IVF hadn't worked and I'm not going to go into it because I'm not going to cry in this video, <laughs> but um, I appreciated all of your messages and comments. I haven't really been in the headspace to reply, so I'm sorry about that, but please know that I've, I've seen them and I appreciate them and um, yeah, thank you. Um, so it's a few weeks after that video and um, I haven't been doing great but also, that's understandable. I wouldn't expect to be, to be honest. Um, it's hard, I'm kind of in that that weird dancing space of trying to give my brain time um, to kind of think about everything because it's been such a big and nasty thing, uh, but also not too much space because if I do that, then I think about things too much and I spiral and that's not good overall. I can't distract myself out of this because I can't, but I also have spent a few too many days struggling to get out of bed recently, just to be honest. Um, and whilst I have been working, because you know, I've got to work, got to pay the bills and all of that, I want to kind of try and take some time to do things to make my brain feel, even for a little while, a little bit better. Because endorphins are good and it's autumn outside and that's very pretty. So it's Thursday as I'm filming this and Mr M and I have taken the day off work tomorrow and my plan for us over the next few days is to do three long walks. So Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And I also want to read within that. Um, so I will talk to you about books and then I will show you the walks that we are going on. Um, and I asked on Instagram what kind of um, reading vlog you would like to see next from me. And I gave you a few different options. And the top two picks were reading spooky, creepy, scary books, because it is the season, and reading your favourite books, viewers' favourite books, and I've already done a questionnaire about that. So I have books ready for both of those reading vlogs. And even though the reading your favourite books slightly won the poll, only just, I thought, actually, because as I'm filming this, it's coming up to Halloween, maybe I should do the spooky, creepy ones first, and then, later I can do the reading your favourite books in the next, you know, month or so. So that's kind of my plan. I haven't pulled a TBR from this video because I really want to just pick up whatever I want to read on any given day. And I am gonna try, just because I really want focus, just something to do. Um, I am gonna try and read a book a day in this vlog. If I don't do that, it doesn't matter, but it's just, I really just need something for my brain to stop it just going over and over and not very nice things. So um, tomorrow is the first day that I'm going to start both walking and also um, reading. And the one that I've decided to start with is this short story collection, which has been sitting on my shelf, I think only for a year. I think I got this around this time last year, maybe two years. Anyway, it's definitely been on a Halloween TBR before and I haven't read it, so gonna read it this year. And this is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez. It's translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. It says, 
Welcome to Buenos Aires, a place of nightmares and twisted imaginings where missing children come back from the dead and unearthed bones carry terrible curses. These brilliant, unsettling tales of revenge, witchcraft, fetishes, disappearances and urban madness spill over with women and girls whose dark inclinations will lead them over the edge. So that's what I'm going to read. And the walk that we're going to do tomorrow is along a part of the Thames that I have never walked along before. Tomorrow we are going to walk from Putney to Kew. So I, the other week, decided to buy a membership to Kew. I decided to to treat myself. It was one of the things that was right. This is gonna this is gonna help, and this is gonna be something that I can go and do because it's a year membership. So it will encourage me to go more. Q is at the opposite end of London to me, so it's quite far away, but it's a very beautiful place to visit and it costs £15 each time you go, but if you have membership it's £80 for the entire year and every time you go you can take someone with you for free. So I only need to go three times throughout the whole year to make it more than worthwhile. That seems like something that I can easily do. So we are going to walk along the Thames from Putney to Kew and then go into Kew Gardens for a little bit at the end um, and on the way there and on the way back I will be reading this and I will talk to you about it afterwards. That is the plan. Over the course of this vlog I will talk to you about other books and the other walks that were going on and I'll also show you any books that arrive in the post over the next coming days. Uh, maybe there will be cooking but I am not sure. I don't know. Let's see how we get on. But thank you for joining me for this vlog and I hope you're all doing okay. Um, let's cut to the footage of the walk that I'm doing tomorrow and I'll see you after that.
yesterday morning and it is early, which you may be able to hear in my voice, but the walk that we went on yesterday was so, it was so lovely. It was so beautiful. And I don't know how much of that was because that walk would always be beautiful, how much it was enhanced by oh. autumn. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it was just really, really lovely. I will, shall I list? And uh, maybe I'll make a map. If I remember, I will make a map and I'll put it in the description box down below in case you happen to be in the London area and that's a walk that you would like to do. It was really nice actually to go to queue at the end and not feel as though we had to hurry round and see everything because I've got the membership. We could just duck in for, I think we were there for an hour and a half or something and comfortably feel that we could leave and, you know, we'll see more of it next time and that's fine. So that made it real chilled at that point which was which was lovely and we did walk past Beverly Brook at one point which I wasn't sure that we were going to do but that is a free decline reference for anybody who is in the know and I do still plan to reread those books and make a note of all of the walks and the rivers that she talks about and then make a video at some point about those places because I think that would be interesting because she does a lot of walking along riverbanks and Regent's Canal and I love to do that too and I would you know I don't know, just for completionist reasons, <laughs> I feel like it's a project I would like doing when it comes to those books. So yeah, we did that yesterday and I read The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. I like this book. There were many things about it that meant I couldn't love it because as I said, at the beginning, it's a short story collection. There were going to be some stories that I liked more than others. But I had a similar issue in inverted commas to it as I did with Curse Bunny by Bora Chung, which I read, I think, around this time last year. That's translated from the Korean by Anton Her. That book, probably more so than this one, actually, really does try and disgust the reader and gross them out. There's a lot of defecating. There's also a lot of defecating in this book here. And I don't mind reading about things that are supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. Heck, I like writing about things that make people feel uncomfortable too. But there needs to be enough substance around that to make the story do something else. If the whole point of a story is to make you feel sick, then that's just not my cup of tea and I'm not here for it. And I felt that some of the stories in this collection, that was their aim and fair enough, but that's not what I particularly want from a story. There were some in here that I enjoyed. I think probably my favorite was one about a group of teenage girls. And one of the girls in the group had a boyfriend and the others were really jealous of her and they decided they wanted to take her down. They just completely turned on her. They became like a group of sirens. And, and yes, that does kind of rely on stereotypical depictions of teenage girls, but because of the folklore elements and holding the characters at a distance, I think it did work. And also it is tough being a teenage girl. There's some elements of truth in it. It's just hyper verbalized a lot and that can be unhelpful but I get it um, I was once a teenage girl <laughs> so um, I liked that particular story but on the whole I just thought this book was okay and I'm glad that I ended up reading it because I know that her novel just came out which I can't remember the title of right now but I'll put the cover here and I had been umming and ahhing about picking that one up but it's massive I think it's over 700 pages and I think I'm gonna say no to that one I think I will, um, or at least no for now. So that was what I read yesterday. Today we are going on another walk and I need to stop talking to you actually because we need to leave the house. We need to leave by half eight, um, which is very soon. And um, yeah, yesterday we obviously went on a long walk and today we're going on an even longer walk. It's a very short train from Waterloo. Um, I'm still not like going places, but I'm trying to do a bit more getting on small journeys public transport wise kind of trying to build up to eventually go home to see my family at some point um so being on a short train journey all masked up and stuff I'm like okay right so that's an extra thing that I've been trying to do and so I'm getting a short train Miss Em and I are getting a short train from Waterloo to Milford and this is one of those out of London day walks that we used to love to do pre-pandemic and in fact I think one of the last reading vlogs I filmed before COVID was going on this walk. So it's Milford to Hazelmere through Thursley, which is a sleepy English town. Is it patronising to call it a sleepy English town? Maybe it is. It's a really cute, quaint English 
um, not town, village, and it has a Saxon church, so it's just super old, and it's really beautiful at this time of year. So we're going to go on this walk. Um, it's through the Devil Devil's Punch Bowl in Surrey, and I had to book the train tickets yesterday because if I book them today, they would be double the price. So it made sense to book them last night. But if I hadn't booked them last night, I don't think we would be going this morning because we both woke up super tired and I'm still super tired. But I know that once we step out of the house and get going, like we'll feel good about it, it'll be fine. Um, and I know that the walk will be worth it. So the book that I'm gonna put in my bag today is Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. And this is a horror story that came out last year and it's a haunted house story. And I think the majority of the characters in this book are trans and they had a bad experience at a haunted house a few years ago and they want to revisit that house and kind of figure out what went wrong in the present day. That's all that I know about it. So I will be reading it on the train there and back and then um, I'll report back when I am home. Probably not tonight because I think it will be a long day so I'll probably check in with you tomorrow morning but in the meantime here is some footage of the countryside walk that we are about to go on and fingers crossed for dry weather. Let's go. Good morning. Um, you are sitting on top of a food waste bin, so I hope that you're feeling glamorous right now. I am definitely feeling glamorous in this uh, dressing gown with this piercing white autumnal light that's making me look like a ghost, which I think is actually quite appropriate. So our walk yesterday was, was very long and we were both completely knackered at the end of it, which was <laughs> nice. Um, I think that we walked, I think it was about 38,000 steps. So that's a lot. I think it was about 15, 16 miles in the end. Um, and it did stay dry, which was lovely. And part of the walk, we always go past this indent in a small hill next to a lake, which reminds me of the hideaway place 
um, under a tree that Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin hide in when there's a ring wraith going by. I'll insert that here. I hope that you can see my vision. Every time I go past that, I think that is a hobbit hole. A hobbit hidey hole. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a really lovely walk. And um, I did read a book. That's what, that's what I'm here to talk about. I did read the book. I read Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. This is a proof. So the cover looks slightly different. I'll put the cover on the screen as I'm talking. Um, I had never read any of Alison Rumfit's writing before. She is an own voices trans writer and I was very excited to read this haunted house story. And there was so much about this book that I loved. And there was a lot about this book that I felt traumatized by. And I wasn't sure if that was good or not. I mean, it is supposed to be traumatizing. It is a, a horror house story, but there were some parts in this book that were, uh, quite a few parts in this book that were a little bit much for me. So let's talk about that. So Alice and Isla used to be friends, maybe dating. Uh, Alice is trans, Isla is not. They spent a night with a friend called Hannah at this, what they thought was just a creepy house turned out to be a haunted house and they both have conflicting ideas as to what happened in that house. And basically they both think that the other person sexually assaulted them and they cannot understand why the other person is saying the opposite. And they find that absolutely terrifying, both because it's ruining their reputations, but also they're worried that they have remembered things incorrectly and why would that be the case? This reminded me a lot of Stranger Things season four, which obviously can't have influenced this at all because it came out after this book was published. Um, but that I mean, trope of possessing and changing people's perception of reality is not a Stranger Things thing, but I just mean that that's what I think of the haunted house in season four, it is season four, right? and uh, Max's experience of um, being possessed by Vecna and all of that stuff. So I was very heavily reminded of that, but it's definitely <laughs> going off in a different direction. So since that night, they haven't spoken to each other and Isla has actually joined a group of uh, trans exclusionary radical feminists and she is protesting against trans rights. So that is the direction that she has gone in and um, Alice is trying to figure out how she feels about everything. The writing is amazing and I love the discussion of possessed houses and haunted houses, the amount of detail that's put into those eerie bits is wonderful. Let me find a bit and read it to you. I don't have many friends, but last year I began to ask whoever I could about hauntings in the vague hope that somebody would understand what I meant when I said hauntings. Most people have a ghost story of some kind, even if they don't believe in ghosts. Maybe their great grandma came to sit at the end of their bed for a month after she died, or they heard footsteps from the attic where there couldn't have been anyone to make them. I try to ask casually at bars or on the internet, have you ever experienced a haunting? I made sure to phrase it like that, not have you ever seen a ghost. I wanted to know about hauntings specifically. One common thread which interested me was that many of the people who answered said that their places of work were haunted. This was actually more common than people's houses being haunted, which I thought was strange. But then again, Bly Manor from Turn of the Screw was a place of work for the governess. And every big imposing house in the country has people working in it, cleaning, cooking. And these days now, nobody lives in them, giving tours, maybe acting out scenes for tourists. So this book builds up to Alice and Isla reconnecting and going back to the house and trying to work out what happened to their friend, Hannah. But the majority of the book, as well as... Touching on the supernatural is about real life horrors. So about homophobia, transphobia, racism, about the far right and about the lack of discourse that can happen online when it comes to political situations. It's about hatred and about um, sexual violence as horror as well. I loved that it took everyday really horrific things and put them as uh, the main focus and aspects of a horror novel. I thought that that was brilliant. I think that to read this book, you have to know yourself and understand yourself and what you are capable of comfortably reading. Obviously, when you're reading horror, you want to feel uncomfortable. And um, it's also important to read about 
horrific topics and acknowledge the horrors of those things. For me, I found the sexual violence in this book extremely difficult to read. I know that that's a difficult subject for me to read and I'm not saying it makes this a bad book at all. I'm just saying if we're also looking at it from an enjoyment point of view, I was not able to enjoy a lot of this book, even in a, oh my God, I'm horrified by this and I appreciate that it's a horror novel kind of way. I just was completely blanking on many of the scenes because they were too much um, for me personally to read. That's my thing, that's not the book's thing, but I just wanted to highlight that in case you also find sexual violence something very difficult to read. So, yes to this, uh, yes to many of the things that it explored and many of the conversations that it had, the discourse that it opened. I loved the mashing together of the supernatural and the very hyper real, thought that was brilliant. Um, but I also couldn't enjoy a lot of it. That is my review. <laughs> um, also, uh, yesterday when we were out, uh, this book got delivered, so it was waiting for me when I came home, so I thought I would just show it here. This is Spiritus Mundi, and this is Writings Born from the Occult, and it's published by Liminal 11. It has writing in by me, by Stephanie Victoire, by Leonie Ross, who wrote this One Sky Day, by Naomi Ishigu, and Rebecca Tomas, and Alice Slater, lots of different people. So I was asked if I would write either a poem, a piece of nonfiction, or a short story using a certain um, technique and in this case I chose automatic writing so there is let me tell you what sections there is automatic writing uh, invocation um, cut up technique lots of different kinds of prompts when it comes to writing and all of these are as the title says born out of the occult and then in each section a person has written what in this case, automatic writing is, and then two writers use that as a jumping off point to write something. So my piece is called Accidental Displeasure, and I decided to write a creative nonfiction piece looking at using voice to text and what that is like, um, almost as a means of your voice running off on its own, because I use voice to text for a lot of my writing these days um, because of my eyesight, but also primarily because of the arthritis in my hands. So um, this is my piece, there's more pages as well, and I thought I would just read you a paragraph that's sitting in the middle. The more I have used voice to text, the more it has come to understand me. It listens and it moves to my dialect. I have learned to conduct it. It's not 100% accurate, and I've become fascinated by the words it still gets wrong, the ones that slip through the net. There almost seems to be a rhythm or a rhyme to them, Sometimes the words that it mishears are more poetic, in the same way that when I teach writing workshops to students who don't have English as their first language and they reach for words in English that I would never think to use, this jarring opens up a conversation. It forces me to sit down and examine the particular skeletons of words. Why are these words so similar? Are these almost homophones? What notes do they play? For instance, when my phone hears my medical condition ectodermal dysplasia, it writes it as accidental dysplasia. Accidental dysplasia is perhaps more accurate. Maybe my phone is slyly cutting corners. After all, the disability I was born with was an accident, a genetic blip, a mishearing in my genes, the genetic coding replacing itself incorrectly, a spell between cells that turned into a completely different beast. And there I was, slash am, a homophone of myself. So that is a very short bit from my piece and I will link the book down below. Um, Blackwells, I think, still have free international shipping if that tickles your fancy. Or actually, it would make a really lovely gift for uh, Christmas and the holiday season because it's just really beautifully put together. So I just thought I would mention that. And then the book that I'm going to read today is really, really small. It's this one here. It's a pamphlet. It's called Close Your Eyes and Come With Me. And it's by Kirstie Logan with illustrations by Block Forest. This is a pamphlet that they have just brought out together for Halloween season. This is one of the illustrations inside. I will link uh, Block Forest's website down below. You know that I love Kirsty. we are pals, and I'm always keen to read whatever she is writing. And I love that she does these smaller projects alongside her obviously bigger projects like novels and full short story collections and all of that 
stuff. So I'm going to pick this up at some point today. It is a collection of six spooky short stories. Uh, and right now I'm going to go and get dressed and um, go for a walk on Hampstead Heath. It is raining today, which is lovely when you're inside, less lovely when you're outside, but we've been spoiled with the weather over the weekend anyway, so that is fine. I feel like I've shown a lot of uh, the outside world in this vlog, so I will show some snippets of my walk today, but maybe only 30 seconds worth. So I will insert that here and I'll come back to you later and chat to you then. Hi, um, I need to leave the house in a second to go and get my COVID booster, but before I do, let me quickly wrap up this because I read Kirsty Logan's book yesterday, this pamphlet, which is called Close Your Eyes and Come With Me. This is very fun. It's very conversational, playing around with six Scottish folk tales and um, the illustrations are also a lot of fun as well. It's super short, so I don't have loads to say about it, just that I liked it. And I think my favorite thing about it is actually the titles because I love, a long title which you may know if you've read any of the books that I've written myself but this is an example of some of the titles you can return from hell but you'll bring back more than you planned you can go home again but only if you're a werewolf you can eat an entire house but it won't fill you up I just think that that is a lot of fun and I will link it down below and then this arrived in the post this morning which is the earth issue of cunning folk this is a literary journal about mythology folklore and I have a poem in this issue called first thing I am a forest and I will link this in the description box down below if you would like to check it out it's a beautiful beautiful journal let me very awkwardly pivot around so that I can uh, show you it's printed in full color and it's just a very very, very beautiful thing. It's more like a book than a journal, to be honest. There's just so much stuff in here. And speaking of poetry, next week, um, or rather the week coming as you're watching this, Friday the 11th of November, I am doing a free online poetry event with some other fantastic poets at uh, Oxford Brooks Poetry Centre, I think that's the name of the people who are hosting it. It's in conjunction with the anthology 100 Queer Poems, which I am part of, and I'll be doing a reading along with, as I said, other poets from the anthology and I'm looking forward to that. It's a free event to uh, watch, it's online, but you need to register in advance, so I will link that in the description box down below if you would like to check it out. Um, yeah, I have to go. I have to go to my GP, but it's a very beautiful walk actually from here to my GP because it's through the woods. So let's go into the woods and I'm gonna listen to Affinity by Sarah Waters, which is my current audiobook of choice. I am enjoying listening to the Sarah Waters book. I don't have much to update you on at all apart from my continuing enjoyment. It is about a clairvoyant who's in a prison and a woman called Margaret who is going to visit women in a prison and there's creepy things happening. Um, also, Margaret's house, one of the people who work there says that they feel like it's haunted. Um, yeah, now I'm just really enjoying dipping in and out of that when I go out for a walk. And I thought I would mention this because I finished reading it. This is A Helping Hand by Celia Dale. I started reading this in the last reading vlog. I only read, I think, the first, 
I can't remember how much I read. Was it the first 40 or 50 pages? It wasn't a huge amount, but I finished reading it now and I loved this book. <laughs> this book is so good. Um, if you missed that previous reading vlog, to very briefly recap, this is about a couple called Mr. and Mrs. Evans who are on holiday in Italy. They've gone there because someone that they used to look after called Auntie Flo has recently died. She left them all her money and while they're there, they meet a wealthy aunt and her niece and they ask the aunt to come and stay with them to relieve the niece and mean that she can go out and live her life. And they say, oh, we would love to care for you. It's very obvious that they want this woman's money but there's just a lot of little dark twisted things going on in various different parts of this book and it feels very much like reading Muriel Spark. Uh, I thought it was great and the ending I just loved. It's a slow burn, you know what's happening, you know that they're trying to get this woman's money so it's not really about discovering huge things, it's more it's making you sit in this uncomfortable space while these characters try and do a not nice thing and you can't do anything about it because you're just the reader. And I was gonna say, and it's already happened. It's fictional, you know what I mean? Anyway, I loved it. It's originally published in the 1960s. It's been reissued now and I thought it was great. So I thought that I would wrap that up in here too. I think I'm gonna bring this video to a close now because I think it's quite long. Um, there will be more reading vlogs forthcoming in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much for keeping me company and holding me accountable for creating content. It's definitely a good distraction for me at the moment and um, I appreciate that. If you are new to this channel and you like this video and you would like to subscribe, that'd be really nice. And if you enjoy my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. I will link that in the description box down below. Um, that's all. I will list everything in the description box that I've talked about here today and I'm sending you lots of love. Bye.